So with that, we will head to our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Sujay Pillai. Uh, mm -hmm. He has 13 years of experience in development, administration, support of system, and currently works as a cloud engineer. He enjoys sharing his experience and helping people discover how they can use the technology to make their life easier, whether that be through automation, container, infrastructure as code or otherwise. Uh, he's Docker captain and runs the Docker uh, Ping, uh, Pengang meet, meetup group. So with that, over to you, Sujay. Hey, thanks, Savita, for that introduction. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen. Let me know if you see my screen. Sure, sure. Your slides are popping in. Yes, we are good to go. Um, okay, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so as Savita introduced me, uh, my name is Sujay Pillay, and I'm a Docker captain and also a Docker community leader where I run Docker Penang Meetup Group. So basically I'm located in Penang, Malaysia, where I work with one of our manufacturing firm over here. And my current role is a cloud engineer where I support multi cloud and help my business to set up infrastructure and uh, help business run. Um, Today I'm going to speak about uh, something called CNAB, uh, which is basically a, two, a specification uh, which has been developed in open. And it helps you to package your applications and can be deployed easily in cloud. So, just to have the agenda set, uh, these are the topics what we will be covering. Uh, first, a brief introduction to CNAB, what the CNAB specification is, what are the different tools available around this specification, and a little demo around this. So to start with, uh, so the first question is, what is CNAB? We have another acronym. Uh, which we need to know. So CNAB is basically called Cloud Native Application Bundle. But if I had to highlight that word application over there and ask you a question, what do you mean by an application? And if we go by the standard dif uh, dictionary definition, uh, an application can be defined as a program or piece of software designed to fulfill a particular purpose. Now, if you put this question to any number of person, you would get different answers from each person depending on the business or the person, what they are having an understanding about their application. So that application might be a binary, which is running in a virtual machine. It can be a binary, which is running in a container or maybe if you have multiple containers, you can get it orchestrated by Kubernetes. Or maybe it may be a web application talking to a hosted database. And as I said, or it might be completely different, which depends on the persons or organization. And then if I put your question, how do you deploy this application? So you get a different set of answers for each. So if you are on a Linux system, uh, you might do app install, or if your application has been containerized and you are using Docker, you could, you could do something like Docker stack deploy, or do a Helm install to set up the package manager on Kubernetes. And maybe you have something called kubectl, apply my, and your YAML definition to run your application. And in terms of infrastructure uh, setup or any cloud infrastructure setup, you may sometimes use Terraform. So in that case, you might be using Terraform Apply or like just what Suman just showcased us, how he deployed the 
Fargate container instance, he used the AWS CLI tool in for AWS infrastructure. And if it was something specific to Azure, you might be, have used AZ CLI for that. So there are different ways to deploy your applications. And then if we navigate to the CNCF landscape, you get this whole board, broad spectrum of applications and different infrastructure components which are available for you to deploy and run your application in cloud. And if you are going to choose any set of uh, tools or applications from this, there is a particular package manager for it uh, where you could pick it up and set up your infrastructure and run your application. So that depends on the choice what you're making over there. But we don't have a single format where we could go and say, please run this application for me. So just to uh, explain you in a little bit more depth, uh, how are you deploying your application right now? So I just transitioned into a new role, which is, uh, cloud engineer and the business comes up to me to set up new infrastructure and uh, deploy the application for the business. So basically it would be kind of a long documentation which I would have to follow if there is no automation. And the main issue with this is that there are a lot of steps and it's not very easy to uh, scale. And then there is this problem works on my machine, my cluster, or my cloud. So how could we solve this problem? So definitely with the new trend in the market, it says put everything into a container. But what if we put all these things into a container? It doesn't solve all the problem. Basically it stall, uh, package up your application, but there is still some things which are left like setting up your infrastructure and uh, provisioning those requirements like the DNS setup, the networking and everything. Those has to be done separately. So what if we could have a single tool which could bundle everything into a single artifact and we could pass this to our consumer who then verifies uh, what things is there in the package and let them take care of uh, the installation part so that the whole infrastructure setup along with their application deployment is taken care of by that package. So it should be something like this, some magic tool, install my app and boom, my app is deployed on the cloud, right? It should be some as easy as this. So that's where CNAP comes into the picture. So CNAP is basically a specification which uh, was open sourced and is developed by major players like Docker, Microsoft, Hashicorp, Pivotal, and Bitnami. Everything is done in open source. Uh, basically the specification came out uh, in December, 2018, initially by Docker and Microsoft and then the various organizations joined them. So the specification basically helps, uh, is a, basically it's a specification uh, which helps for packaging distributed applications and helps your deployment into the cloud and makes it easy. So basically uh, CNAB facilitates the bundling, the installation and managing of container native apps and the couple services such as the infrastructure provisioning maybe it should it may be such as cloud storage your dns entry the load balancer setup the ssl cert and everything is managed in a single bundle and on top of that it's possible to have the governance piece uh, on top of it, like the bundle can be signed cryptographically, which makes it secure so that when the consumer is trying to install it, they can verify it's coming from a trusted source. So if I had to do kind of a dissection of the CNAB uh, bundle, 
basically a CNAP bundle uh, is a mix of a bundle descriptor. A bundle descriptor is basically it assigns some metadata, um, which is the name of your image. The, then it contains a list of parameters, which is taken as uh, input, a list of credentials and list of executable images. And it along with contains your application image, which is basically a Docker image, what you have containerized. And there is an invocation image, uh, which I will explain you later. So all this gets bundled together and with the native Docker tool, you bundle it as a CNAB according to the CNAB specification and push it to a OCI compliant registry. So when I say OCI compliant registry, basically you can consider like Docker Hub, the Google Container Registry or Azure Container Registry, such kind of registries which are OCI compliant. And once you put uh, push publish this image into a registry, uh, you can just ask your consumer to pull it down and just run it on their end to have everything set up like from your infrastructure set up to your application deployment take place in the single bundle. So I highlighted invocation image. So basically the invocation image can be is the entry point uh, which starts setup of your application. It may be setting up your infrastructure, like basic tools like Azure CLI or ARM templates. It can be a Helm client or Helm charts in your Kubernetes cluster and various other YAML definitions. So this everything goes into bundle non and it's named as invocation image. So what you see on the right hand side is basically a directory structure, how a basic CNAP bundle looks like. I'll just show you in my demo part, how this looks like really. So the invocation image contains all the necessary pieces, uh, like depending on the CNAP tool, which you are using. Uh, then it contains some helper tools some configuration file scripts and like the charts, hand charts or other YAML definitions which are needed for your application deployment. So once the specification was out, uh, these are the various tools which have been developed on according to the specification, uh, CNAP specification. So Docker app was the first tool which came out in into the market and uh, basically Docker app is a Docker CLI plugin, which you configure on your Docker installation. And you can just execute as a basic Docker command, Docker app run. Um, then there is this another tool called Duffel, which is again, another implementation of C CNAB and uh, there is another tool called Porter, which we are going to have a demo about it. So Duffel and Porter are basically uh, kind of the same thing. Porter is developed mainly by Microsoft as an open source project. And it's a part of the joint development foundation. So Porter provides you a way to declare uh, everything. Like it provides a declarative authoring experience with the bundles what you're writing and lets you to reuse existing scripts and tools such as Helm, Term, Terraform, Kubernetes, and Azure. Porter also has uh, various SDKs available in languages such as Go, .NET, Python, Rust. So you can ex make use of this SDK and extend this tool if you want. So what is Porter? So Porter is just another uh, reference implementation of CNAP and creates a CNAP, which helps you to create a CNAP compliant bundles for your distributed application and deployment stacks. 
once these bundles are developed on your local box, uh, you may push and pull these bundles into a container registry, just like any other Docker image, what you would do. And this registry should be OCI compliant. Um, it works in both connected and disconnected environments, like for environments where it's very restricted in cases such as financial institution, you can just uh, download these bundles, which are basically zip files and execute those in a disconnected environments. And it's also useful to run it as a command line and also as a standalone installers. So when I say standalone installers, it means like basically if you have to consider it as compare it as, it as a MSI installer in a Windows machine, it get, you get a nice GUI where you click next, next, next and the installation of the software is done on your machine. So you can develop nice GUIs around it. And if you don't see something um, according to your needs, you can extend also the portal bundle using the SDKs available. So uh, how does the portal workflow happens on? So basically there are two uh, personas. One is the developer. So me as a developer, I would install the portal uh, client on my machine and I would start with a bundle creation. So basically these are set of commands which are available. So I would start with portal create. So once you execute portal create, it basically create a scaffolds some projects for you according to the CNAP specification. And then you adjust uh, the scaffolding or the project with your requirements, and then you do a portal build. So once you execute this build, uh, there is this uh, OCI image, which is generated on your machine, and you can just push it to a registry. So basically the workflow remains something similar to the Docker world, where you build a Docker image, run it on your machine, and then push it to a registry. And then once uh, it's generated, the portal build is done, you do a portal credentials generate. This step is required if there is some authentication piece involved in it. Uh, we will see this in demo how it works. And then you do a portal install, which basically sets up the environment and plus your application deployment. And then if you are not satisfied with what you have, then you can iterate on the same piece of the code, test it out, and once everything works fine, you do a portal publish. So that's where it gets uh, published to a registry. Then comes the second persona, which is the consumers. So as a consumer, what I will do is I will get the bundle downloaded from the registry. So the first thing I would have to do is Portal explain. So basically, it's a description of your bundle, how, what things has been bundled into that, um, what images are involved in it, uh, what clients are there in that installation. So basically, it gives you a detailed description of the bundle. And then, if I need to install that bundle, I would generate credentials on my site. Uh, using the portal credential generate again and using the specific tag for that bundle which has been downloaded. So once that credentials are generated uh, and then you execute portal install. So the portal uh, installation, portal client knows where to read the credentials from and it basically executes your uh, bundle starting with the invocation image where it goes and uh, runs the executable which is being defined in that invocation image. And then, so that's once my installation is done, if there is a new uh, package available, bundle available on the remote repository, I would do just a portal upgrade to do my application upgrade. And basically, if you're not happy, do a portal uninstall. 
So that's basically how the whole portal workflow looks like. So it would make more sense if we dive into a demo now. So let me just switch to my terminal over here in this case. Let me know if you have any questions. Yes, Sujay, we have one question. Yep. When you have seen a bundle in registry, the count the mm -hmm. customer will need Docker install to push and run this? Yes. So that's one of the basic requirements. Sorry, I didn't mention that. So basically to have you uh, CNAP run for you. So you see on my machine, I have a Docker desktop running. So first requirement is Docker because everything at the backend is run by Docker, managed run and managed by Docker because it's a container which is getting executed. So yes, Docker is needed. And uh, is it cloud agnostic? Yes, it's cloud agnostic. So that's what I'm going to show you in the demo. Okay. So let me just... Uh, so I just created a directory to hold my bundle. Um, so... First, I would do a portal create. So if you see, uh, I am into the directory where I want. So my context is basically set to my current directory. So I need to, doesn't need to point where my context is. Just like Docker, if you do Docker build, you would put a dot at the end, which shows uh, where my context is. So right now within my directory, I am, it is my context. So at the end, if you see photo create, I'm not specifying. So photo understands it where my context is. And if I do, so if you see on my screen, it scaffold a project structure for me. Basically it contains a docker file.template, um, a helper.sh and photo.yml. So let me show you how it looks like. So portal.yml is basically your bundle descriptor, which I showed earlier. So it's uh, something what the portal project has defined according to their terms, but at the backend, it converts into a bundle.json, which is basically a requirement for CNAP specification. So in my portal.yml, I have a set of tags, uh, fields, name, version description and tag so tag is something how my image bundle would be identified and these are basic metadata associated with it then comes with mixins so mixins are like uh, plugins which are available within porter uh, let me show you so if i do a porter mixins and I do a list. So it shows various mixins available on my machine right now. So when I say mixing, it would be a command line tool or a binary, which helps you to set up that particular requirement, what you have. Let's say I need to set up a Kubernetes cluster. So I would use the Kubernetes mixing and if I need to work with Terraform, mm -hmm. I would use the Terraform mixing. And the basic uh, mixing, which is easy to work with is like, let's say you have a make file defined and there are a bunch of shell scripts here, which you do execute to set up your environment and uh, deploy your application. So basically you can reuse the whole thing using the execute uh, mixing. So it helps you to set up um, simple shell scripts where you can define your functions, what needs to be done. So in my, here I'm seeing use the exec mixing and there are basically three um, steps which you need to pass in a bundle. One is install, which basically takes care of installing your bundle. 
uh, the second is like in the work in the workflow which i showed you as a consumer there was a step where i could upgrade my bundle so this is taken care by this definition and then there is this uninstall thing so these three things what you see on screen should be there in a bundle so once this is defined uh, let's say if you need to have a custom invocation image uh, which you where well, there is a need to do something in a certain manner uh, you can define your own docker file template so let's see what happens when i do uh, so once i let's say i am satisfied with my portal.yaml i need to build my bundle so i will do a portal build so put a build when I executed that command, it's basically running some Docker containers at the back and it's creating a bundle for you. So it's generating a Docker file and that Docker file got generated over here. So if you want some custom definitions within this Docker file, which is generated, that's where you use the Docker file dot TMPL file template file which helps you to add extra steps into here according to your requirement. And if I do a Docker images on my screen, you can see uh, basically there would be an image with that name on my machine somewhere. I can show you later. So I did a portal create, portal build, and then I can do a portal publish. So that would basically fail because this repository is not under my name. So if I want to push it to my Docker Hub, I would just come and change the name over here with my Docker Hub account. So I would have to do a dark portal build again. And do a portal publish. So that's basically I have completed a full um, workflow cycle as a developer. And I'm just pushing this to my Docker Hub where you can, you as a consumer can pull it down and uh, run it on your side by doing a portal install. So while that's executing, uh, let me switch to another demo where um, things are more onto the cloud. So basically uh, what I want to do is that on my local machine, I have a Docker image, which is tagged as this one. So JPLA slash ACI. So compare it with uh, what Suman described just before my talk. So what he showcased you was that he had a Python app, which he deployed onto uh, Fargate with all the tools which he used was the AWS CLI. He built the image and pushed it to a ECR and then went into AWS console and then de described the task definition and everything and deployed a Fargate. So let's say I don't want to do that whole thing and just want to use a portal uh, CNAP bundle. How could I do that? So what I would do is that I would start defining my bundle. So in my case, first I am doing a mixing and then saying that I want AZ mixing. AZ is basically a CLI tool which is used to interact with Azure Cloud. So that my requirement is that I need to deploy this uh, image, Docker image onto a ACI instance, Azure Container instance. It's something similar to a WS Fargate, where the, if you have a need to run a single container deployment, uh, you could do that in an ACI instance. So 
my requirement is to do deploy that container in ACI. So how I'm just showcasing how you could do that in a CNAB way. So I, gen I scaffolded my uh, project structure and then I'm updating my porter.yaml. So as I need to work with Azure, I am using the AZ mixing. And to work with Azure, first you need to set us credentials. So basically the requirements is that you need to log into Azure CLI. Uh, you need a subscription ID, your tenant, your client ID and secret. So those are the credentials which I need. Then as a parameter, what I'm saying is that I want this to be deployed in a resource group named RG Oscon Kochi. So resource group is like a bundling of all your infrastructure into a single folder like structure in Azure. So that's where I'm using resource group. And I want that to be deployed in a Southeast Asia region. And my app name has to be identified by Oscon Kochi. And there are two set of outputs what I am I'm going to display out. One is the fully qualified domain name and what IP does the container which is going to be spinned up is running on. So that's how I define my parameters and outputs. Now I need to set up the installation part. So if I had to do it in a manual way, uh, what you do see on my screen at the top is I would, if I was doing the same things from the CLI, I would have used this command, az group create, uh, the name of the resource group and the location. And then I would do az container create with the set of parameters which is passed along with it. So these are the basic two lines which I was going to execute if I had done it through CLI way. So, I'm just replicating those as my installation steps. So AZ, first I'm doing a CLI login so that my using my credentials, what I have set, I'm get authenticated to my Azure account. Then I'm creating a resource group. And then I'm saying, please spin up a container for me. So I'm setting various flags, which is according to the command, which I showed you at the top. So this I have, name, image, CPU, memory. So I could pass all those things in the parameter over here. And in the outputs, so I'm displaying what IP, what is the domain name, what has been assigned to that container and what IP is it running on. So that's how I have written my bundle definition porter.yml. So the first thing I would do is porter build. So it build my image. And then if you see on my bundle definition, let me close this one. I need to have credentials set up. So I have already set up that form, but if you had to do, you would do something like pro portal credentials generate and just give a name, my credentials, and it would ask you a set of questions. So it's asking you, how would you like to set your credential client ID? So I'm seeing environment variable. So basically it would go and ask you a set of questions according to what you have set up in your YAML dot dot YAML. So I have one, two, three, and four credentials set up. So it would basically ask you four different questions and you need to provide the values uh, for the credentials, what you have generated from your Azure account. So if you see that, Credentials which are associated with my bundle is residing in my machine rather than being packaged up along with the bundle. So that's how it makes it uh, secure. So you as a consumer, if you needed to 
uh, install this bundle, you would have to do this on your side. So once uh, my bundle uh, credentials are generated, what I would do is that I would do a So let me show you my Azure subscription. Right now, you don't see any resource group called RG Kuskan Kochi. So So what I'm saying is that please install my bundle using the credentials called, which I generated earlier, uh, which I have named as Oscon Uh So it's go basically going and executing the bundle, whatever steps I have mentioned in install. So it was Azure CLI login, create resource group. So it did a login for me. It created a resource group. And now it's deploying a container instance for me, uh, which you can see coming up on my screen soon. So let's see, still doing the work. So you see the resource group came up and it's doing the deployment for me. And it says, uh, execution completed successfully. Uh, right now, it's not showing me the output over here, but if I had to do go to So what I did is that once I installed the bundle, I'm just executing the command portal show. So it says uh, the bundle is named Oscon Kochi. Uh, created one minute ago, all the descriptions, uh, metadata associated with it. And if you see on my screen, it is outputting something for me. Uh, the fully qualified domain name, uh, that is this one, and it's running on 2043. So let's verify it against the Azure portal. So this is the Azure container instance running for me, 2043, 1742, and this is the fully qualified domain name. And if I had to browse that, so you see my application running. So that's what I did as a developer. Now you as a consumer, if you wanted to have this uh, bundle on your side, so I had published an earlier version of it. Uh, right now on machine, I didn't execute. Uh, so all you would do is that go and do a porter install. So that would uh, pull your bundle, which is called sujaypilay slash porter hello or if I had to do the Kochi one, this would be this. So all you would do is Docker pool and then do a portal install on your side. So yeah, basically that was my demo. Uh, do you have any questions from the audience? Yes, we have a few questions. Uh, can yeah. it be fully automated so as to download and install Docker as well as on consumer machines, perhaps by extending Porter? Uh, so the question, if I understand is Porter, can Porter do the automation of installing the Docker, Docker itself? Yes. Uh, I don't see a mixing available, but as I said, it's extendable. Um, so basically I assume it can be possible, but I'm not sure I can check with my colleagues and let you know about that. Okay. I'm not basically done that part because I had every time Docker installed on my machine or wherever the 
development i am doing okay we have few more is porter good to use for production yes if you are so the cnap specification um it's 1.0 is a concrete definition which is available on the github project let me show you the github project for it so this uh, if you go to portal.sh that's where you can find all the details about it yes it's a uh, production ready and i have few instances where i have used it in the production but it's a uh, basic stuff not like complex definitions so uh, basically what i showcased in the demo was just an azure piece but if i had a requirement where i had to do this on aws what just suman showed me during his demo uh, we could just replace the mixin over here and define the bundle according to aws requirement so this uh, use case what i showcased is just having a docker image which you developed on your machine and deploying it into azure using azure container instances so yes this can be extend more uh, let me show you few projects which are available on github for this one So if you go into the example folders, uh, you can see a variety of uh, use cases. So there is an example of deploying it to Google, uh, setting up your Kubernetes cluster using Porter. Uh, there is an example of using Azure and Terraform, deploying a WordPress on Azure using Kubernetes. And this AKS Spring Music is basically a Java application, which you again is deployed on azure kubernetes so, so yes uh, it is cloud agnostic uh, and it can handle many use cases what at least i have seen so it it looks like we can make uh, our applications available to install on consumers azure or aws environment using their credential is that right yes yeah, so the application which i bundled right now onto github what you will do as a consumer will pull this image this which is basically a docker image and then on your side you would do a portal porter uh let me porter describe what was it porter I just forgot how much photo inspect. Go to explain. Yeah. So if you as a consumer want to run any application uh, bundle on your side, uh, what you will do is that pull it down and do a Porter explain. So Porter explains says that uh, these are the set of credentials which are required to run that specific bundle. So in my case, it's a client ID. So I would put a nice description over here, which would identify what this credential is meant for. So you as a consumer uh, would go and read this definition of the bundle and understand how it should be what parameters and credentials are required for that bundle to be installed. So that once you are uh, sure of those things, uh, once the credentials are set, all you need to do is that portal uh, install and it will take care of the installation. So basically your infrastructure setup and your application deployment will be handled by portal.
So yeah, that's it from my side and my demo. And uh, I'll, I have published this project on my GitHub, uh, which I showcased during the demo. It's available under my GitHub by this repo. And I will be publishing this slide deck soon. Uh, so if you have to start with CNAB, cnab.io is the website where the whole, and there is a community meeting which happens every other Wednesday. If you're interested, you can join that meeting for CNAB. And these are the other two websites for the full and portal. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Sujai, for driving us to Sina package in cloud native application. It was a wonderful session. Thank you again. Yep. Thanks.